Good afternoon and welcome to the Balance of Life. I am Elder Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. For truly this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always an honor and a pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. We are coming on a little later because I noticed some changes in our uh, our, our lineup. But how many of you know that uh, all things work together for the good and to them that love the Lord? We would love to invite each and every one of you to become partners in prayer with us. Partners in prayer is where we believe the word of God that ye pray ye one for another that ye may be healed. We continually lift you up before our Father which is in heaven. We pray that what we share here on the balance of life is edification unto your soul, unto your mind, that it brings clarity to your spirit. We absolutely love each and every one of you. We believe the word of God where it says, pray ye one for another that ye may be healed. On today's broadcast, what we are sharing with you is to assist in spiritual warfare. And right now the enemy is, is on such an attack of the body of Christ. He is attacking those who are who who has accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. He's attacking the purpose and plans that God has upon your life. And the enemy's job is to get you to veer off of the path that God has ordained for your life. There's a spirit of confusion going on. And it's I, I, I'm seeing it like never before. And so on today's broadcast, what we're going to share with you is we are sharing uh, Ephesians 6 and 12, talking about the whole armor of God, Acts 1 and 8, where it talks about, after that you shall receive power, that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then we're going to read to you, just some information about the attack of the enemy and what we're sharing we, we just pray that uh, it, it sheds some enlightenment on what you're going through at this time what we're all going through he attacks each and every one of us the enemy attacks all of us and the more you pursue and accept what God has ordained for your life the greater the attack but if you are not strong in spiritual warfare and saying what the word of God says you will be overtaken and so today we plead the blood of Jesus over each and one of your, each and every one of your lives we speak healing unto your minds we bind the hands of the enemy, just as Jesus said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And even the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke thee. We say those very same words concerning your lives today. We bind the hands of the enemy and the demonic forces, the spirits that he has set to attach itself to you. That you keep moving forward and pressing forward in the call that God has upon your life. Stay focused. Put on the whole armor of God. Acts 1 and 8. Says, but after ye shall receive power 
after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the othermost part of the earth. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And I want to tell you that the enemy has certainly sent out attacks and was trying to hinder and, and trying to block what God has called us to do. Ephesians, the sixth chapter in the 10th verse says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. As Christians, we are engaged in a spiritual conflict with evil. This spiritual conflict is described as a warfare of faith. Reference scriptures are Ephesians 6 and 12, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, 1 Timothy 1, 18 through 19. This spiritual warfare of faith continues until we enter the life to come. Satan is a masterful strategist. Who seeks our he seeks our downfall by his various schemes. Some of the wiles of the devil are to per, perpetuate division in the church, unbelief in the promises of God, discouragement, temptation to sin, compromise of conscience, unwillingness to forgive, getting our eyes off of Jesus, fear accusations, indulging our sinful nature, spiritual apathy, and so forth. Here, Paul in instructs believers to take their stand against the schemes of the devil. We can take confidence in the fact that our victory has been secured by Christ himself through his death on the cross. Jesus himself waged a triumphant battle against Satan disarm the evil powers and authorities. Reference scripture, Colossians 2.15, Matthew 12.29, Luke 10.18, John 12.31. Led captives in his train and redeem the believer from Satan's power. At the present time, we are involved in a spiritual warfare that we Waged by the power of the Holy Spirit, as found over in Romans. The 8th chapter and the 13th verse. John 12 and 31 is another reference scripture. We are to fight against the sinful desires within ourselves, as found in 1 Peter 2 and 11. Galatians 5.17, against the ungodly pleasures of the world and temptations of every sort. Matthew 13.22, Galatians 1 and 4, James 1.14-15, 1 John 2.16. And against Satan and his forces, we are called to be separate from the present world system. We are called to resist and overcome the temptations of the world and sin. As Christian soldiers, we must wage war against all evil, not in our own power. I'll say that again. We are not to wage war over power and sin in our own, in our own power, in our own ability. At the beginning, as I stated even the Lord said over in Zechariah when it came to Joshua and the reclothing of Joshua, Satan the Lord rebuked thee. And let me go over there. This teaching is, is, is needed at this time. 
because the body of Christ is under a horrific attack. Over in Zechariah, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse, it says, And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? As Israel's representative Joshua here could not resist Satan, for the high priest was clothed in filthy garments. God himself resisted Satan and rebuked him, for God had chosen Israel to carry out his purposes. Israel was a brand plucked out of the fire. The fire represents Israel's sufferings in the Babylonian exile. God had brought Israel through those sufferings, not to destroy them, but to discipline them and prepare them for greater things. God has created you for greater things. And the trials and tribulations that you face, that we face, they are not meant to destroy you, but to prepare you for greater things. But the tactics of the enemy will have you believe that God doesn't love you. That he's not shielding you, he's not protecting you, that he has cast you aside, but that is a lie from the pits of hell. Here on the balance of life, it is our desire, our earnest desire, is that we all grow into the, to, to the maturity in Christ, that we will know of his love, the love of Christ, the depth, the length, the height of him that we come into the fullness of the knowledge of Christ. That is our desire. Once again, as Christian soldiers, we must wage war against all evil, not in our own power. Reference scripture is 2 Corinthians 10 and 3, but with spiritual weapons. And we're going to speak about those and over in Ephesians, the 10th chapter, 6th chapter, excuse me, talking about the whole armor, also uh, reference scripture is 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. In our warfare of faith, we are called to endure hardships like good soldiers of Christ, suffer for the gospel, fight the good fight of faith. Wage war, persevere, conquer, be victorious, triumph, defend the gospel, contend for the faith, not be frightened by opponents, put on the full armor of God, stand firm, destroy the strongholds of Satan, take captive every thought and become powerful in battle. Let me go over those things again. In our warfare of faith, we are called to endure hardships like good soldiers of Christ. Suffer for the gospel. Fight the good fight of faith. Wage war. Conquer. Be victorious. Triumph. Defend the gospel. Contend for the faith, not be frightened by opponents, put on the full armor of God, stand firm, destroy the strongholds of Satan, take captive every thought, and become powerful in battle. Ephesians 6 and 11 goes on to say, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. 
Let's look at verse 12 where it says against principalities, powers, and rulers. Christians face a spiritual conflict with Satan and a host of evil spirits. These powers of darkness are the spiritual forces of evil who energize the ungodly, oppose the will of God, and frequently attack the believers of this age. They constitute a great multitude and are organized into an empire of evil with rank and order. Verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. That truth is the word of God. Seek and ask for a revelation of God's word, which is a spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. What the Holy Spirit hears, that which he will speak unto you, what he sees, he will show it unto you. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to be who he was created to be, what he was designed to be. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, you are righteous through Jesus Christ. You are righteous through him, your faith, your belief. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is our offensive weapon in spiritual warfare. Satan will make every effort to undermine or destroy our confidence in that sword, which is the word of God. The church, and we are the church, must defend the inspired scriptures against allegations that scripture is not God's word in everything it teaches. To abandon the attitude of Jesus and the apostles towards God's inspired word is to destroy its power, to rebuke or correct, to redeem, to heal, to drive out demons and to become, to overcome all evil, to deny scripture's absolute trustworthiness and all it teaches is to deliver ourselves into Satan's hands. We must believe God at his very word wavering at nothing. If you have just tuned in, you have tuned into the balance of life. And I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, we are excited about what God is doing in the atmosphere. It is a time like never before that we stay connected to the vine, stay connected to Jesus, stay connected to the Holy Spirit. Don't refuse the chastisement of the Holy Spirit. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God will direct your path. I know he will. I am believe I am a believer. I believe it with my whole heart. God will direct your path. We'll be back in just a moment. As you know, we are currently traveling for ministry and Right now, we are broadcasting from Vineland, New Jersey. I am so excited. You know, when, when God allows us to, to go out and to travel and, 
and to minister and to teach. We are excited and, and, and we're yield, yielding ourselves woefully unto God. If you are in the New Jersey area and looking for a place of worship, I would like to invite you to Faith Outreach Deliverance Church. Chief Apostle Roman D. Allen Sr. is the pastor. The co-pastor is Pastor Lillian C. Allen. 100 South Pine Street, Bridgeton, New Jersey, 08302. Every Sunday morning, 9.45 a.m. is Sunday school. 11 a.m. is morning worship. Every Wednesday, 6 o'clock p.m. is prayer. 7 o'clock p.m. is Bible study. On Friday is 7 o'clock p.m. evangelistic services. If you are in the Tampa Bay area and looking for a place of worship, I would like to invite you to True Life Community Worship Center. 7402 North 56th Street, Building 600, Tampa, Florida 33617. The leaders of this great house is Senior Pastor Calvin Green and Pastor Angela Green. Every Sunday morning, 9 o'clock a.m. is Sunday School. 10.30 a.m. is Morning Worship. On Wednesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. is Bible Study. <sighs> If you're looking for something to do in the Tampa Bay area on Saturday and every second Saturday, please join Corey Curry and Tag Marketing for Shop and Sip. Shop with over 20 vendors. For more details, please call 805-776-3516. If you have just tuned in, you have tuned into the balance of life. I thank you so very much for joining us. And we're talking about the whole armor of God. We're talking about uh, having power over Satan and demons. So important that we learn how to fight in the spirit. This is nothing that we can do in our flesh. Not even of our own ability. It takes saying what God says, saying what the scriptures say, having yourself in a place of prayer, believing what God says, believing what is taught in the scriptures by the apostles, by, by the prophets in the Old Testament, standing firm on God's word, believing God's word for exactly what it is, wavering at nothing. We read for you over in Zechariah, where the Lord told Satan, Satan, the Lord rebuke you, where he was standing to oppose the work of Joshua that he was doing. The enemy stands to oppose you and the work that you are created to do for our Father, which art in heaven. And if we are not careful, if we don't keep ourselves clean and pure, clean hands and a pure heart, casting down every high imagination that wants to exalt itself against the Father, binding the hands of the enemy, keeping ourselves in prayer and submissive unto the will of God, being obedient to the Holy Spirit, having a discernment of spirit, The enemy will overtake us. The warfare that we're in is not carnal, but is mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. And what we're going to share with you now is power over Satan and demons. If you would like a copy of today's broadcast, please email us at aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. Subject, after that, you shall have power. Today's date is May the 8th, 2019, and I'd like to uh, recognize and say happy birthday to my sister, Rachel Marie Wilson. Happy birthday to you. I absolutely love you very, very much. 
power over Satan and demons. One of the primary emphasis in Mark's gospel is Jesus' overriding concern to defeat Satan and his demonic powers. Over in Mark 3.27, this is phrased as binding the strong man. So let's take a look at Mark 3.27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. If we are not equipped by putting on the whole armor of God, then the enemy can come in, attack, and overtake us. The word of God truly says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It doesn't say that the attack will not come. It says that it shall not prosper. If we have our spiritual eyes open and in tune with the Holy Spirit, he can't come in and kill, steal, and destroy. One of my favorite scriptures to go to is the 91st Division of Psalms. It is a declaration. It is a covenant. It is God's promises of, of what he will do for us. I absolutely love this particular Psalms, 91st Division of Psalms. It is my go-to scripture, spiritual warfare. Once again, if you would like a copy of today's broadcast, after that you shall receive power. I invite you to email us at aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. You can also log in and, and, and download today's broadcast. After that, you shall receive power May the 8th, 2019. If you would like a written content, please feel free to email us and we will get that over to you. Psalms 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Eight thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me. This is the promise of God. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That is the promise of God. That is a, a, a word for spiritual warfare for you and I. We'll be back in just a moment. We at The Balance of Life would like to invite you to log on to our website, www.angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com. Via the website, you have the opportunity to check out our ministry schedule for television and radio broadcasting, the school of ministry and mentoring, the courses that we offer. All of our workbooks are available on Amazon. 
or you can order directly through us. This is for self-study. We do offer a group rate on our workbooks. We are currently in a teaching series of discovering your ministry and spiritual gifts. Classes are filling up fast via webinar. Registration is now open. We do have space available for our June 10th class. If you are interested in registering for that particular class and discovering your ministry and spiritual gifts, we are also teaching on the fivefold ministry during this course, the ninefold purpose of those ministry gifts. There is space available. Please email us at aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com for registration of our June 10th class via webinar, Discovering Your Ministry and Spiritual Gifts. We will get information over to you, registration forms, along with pricing. We are also looking to fill classes as we will have a class five days a week for discovering your ministry and spiritual gifts. Each class we will uh, do a breakdown, the overall of the five-fold ministry, and really take our time looking at those ministry gifts. Also, while you're on the website, you can check out our magazine, Hope and Truth, our bookstore, as well as our publishing division. So there's a there's a whole host of information on the website and uh, partners in prayer. If you would like to sow a financial seed in this ministry, please email us at aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. Also, our cash app is dollar sign AF Ministries. Or if you would like for us to send you out information on how you can mail in your financial seed, just email us at aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. If you would like for us to pray with you or that you have a specific prayer request, our telephone number is 813-336-2181, or you can email in those prayer requests as well. We're talking about power over Satan and demons here on the balance of life. One of the primary emphasis in Mark's gospel, and we just uh, taking a look at Mark 3 and 27, talking about the strong man is, is phrased as binding the strong man, which is Satan. And spoiling and robbing one's house. You are the house, that temple. It is our only desire that with the information that we share, that you are set free from the enslavement of, this, of Satan. This power over Satan is especially ev evident in driving out demons or evil spirits. And what are demons? The New Testament frequently refers to those who are suffering from Satan's oppression and influence because of the indwelling of an evil spirit and to Jesus' conflict with demons. In the Gospel of Mark, for example, there are numerous encounters describing the attack of the enemy. In verses 123 through 28, Verse 32 through 34 and 39, chapters 3, 10 through 12, 14, 1 through 15, chapters 5, 1 through 20, chapter 6 and 7, verse 13, chapter 7, 24 through 30, chapter 9, 14 through 29, and chapter 16 and 17. And that's all within the book of Mark. 
demons are spirit beings who have personality and intelligence as members of Satan's kingdom and as enemies of God and humans as found in Matthew 12:43 through 45 they are evil malicious and organized with different levels of rank and delegated authority under Satan demons are the power behind idol gods so that to worship false gods is essentially to worship demons. The New Testament presents the world as estranged from God and seized by Satan. Reference scripture is John 12, 31, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, Ephesians 6, 10 through 10. Demons are within the hierarchy of the rulers of this age. Christians must wage continual warfare with them. And we read that over in Ephesians 6 and 12. Demons can and often do live in the bodies of unbelievers. Mark 5, 15 and Luke 4 and 41. Luke 8, 27, 28 and Acts 16 and 18 give examples of that. And use their voices to talk. They enslave such individuals and influence them toward evil, immortality, and destruction. Demons can cause physical illness in the body. Matthews 9, 32 through 33, 12, 22, 17, 14 through 18, Mark 9, 20 through 22, Luke 13, 11, and 16. Although not all sickness and disease are the result of evil spirits. Matthews 4, 24, Luke 5, 12 through 13. Sometimes uh, things come on the body and it is so that God can be glorified. Given an example, not every attack is from the enemy. That's why we need the, the gift of the discerning of spirits to know what has attacked us, what has attached itself to us. Once again, Today's broadcast is to educate, to inform, to enlighten. Put on the whole armor of God. You have the power. After that, the, pow the, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall have power. You cannot, we cannot fight the attacks of the enemy and our own ability. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but through God, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. We're getting ready to come to a conclusion for today. So if the Lord prolongs his coming, we will continue today's topic on tomorrow. Those involved in spiritualism and magic, which is sorcery, are dealing with evil spirits. They can, this can easily lead to demonic bondage. Reference scriptures 13 and 8 through 10, chapter 19, 19, Galatians 5, 20, and Revelations 9 and 20. Evil spirits will be especially active in the last days of this age, promoting the occult, immortality, violence, and cruelty. They will assault God's word and sound, and sound doctrine. Reference scriptures, Matthew 24, 24, 2 Corinthians 11, 14, 15, 1 Timothy 4 and 1. The ultimate outpouring of demonic activity will be in the Antichrist and his followers. Reference scriptures, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, Revelations 13, 2 through 8, 16, 13 through 14. And as we're coming to a close today, here on the balance of life, if the Lord prolongs his coming, we will be with you again on tomorrow, part two. After that, the Holy Ghost come upon you. You shall receive power. We're talking about overcoming Satan and his demonic forces. And we're going to go further into this. Uh, Satan sends out those spirits and demonic forces he sends out those spirits he's limited so what he does he does through demonic forces to attack the mind of uh, the spirit of the individual he is after the purpose that god has upon your life 
We love you. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way.